The purpose of today is to uh, allow everyone, either through the cameras, through the print, uh, through discussion, to uh, do what we did on Saturday night. And that's uh, say, welcome back, Dwayne Poli. <clears throat> and that's what I referenced uh, after the game with our players. He's back where he belongs. He's back where he feels comfortable. And I use the phrase, he's back home on the basketball floor. And to a person, I think everyone is excited and thrilled that Dwayne Poli is has the opportunity now to safely be back on the court. And, and that's the most important thing. So we're very pleased that, uh, that we've got him back. I think he played 13 minutes in the game. That was an as significant as he is back with us. Uh, so any, uh, maybe, maybe Dwayne, I'll let you make a comment since you're the guy that uh, we're all talking about. Uh, let you have a comment and then take some questions. Okay. Well, first, I want to thank you guys for all coming in. Uh, I want to thank God for allowing me to, you know, get a second chance at playing for uh, Coach Fisher in San Diego State. And I want to thank uh, Tom. I want to thank all my doctors, all my f family, all my friends, and uh, my girlfriend for su all the support that everybody has given me and uh, just everybody for just being really positive around me and not really giving me any negative thoughts. I really appreciate all the love and prayers that everybody sent to me as well. I guess for, for both you guys, was, were there results of like, specific results from I guess specific tests that either gave you a clue as to maybe what caused uh, you going down, and also that led to you know saying like, okay, Dwayne, you can, you can come back and play safely. Um, well, the whole thing was uh, surrounded around being dehydrated at the time. So uh, yeah, I guess specific tests they showed that um, that might. Uh, Liquid levels were a little low during the event, and I think that's what caused the whole thing to happen. So what are you doing differently, Dwayne? Uh, just taking care of my body. You know, I changed up my diet a lot. Um, my mom and uh, my girlfriend and her mom as well have been doing a good job of uh, making sure I'm taking vitamins and eating a lot healthier and just taking care of myself a lot better. How did it feel to get back out there? Oh, it was a great feeling, you know. it was. It was like uh, being back out there, you know, I hadn't played in almost two months, so just to get back out on the court, it was a great feeling. Were you apprehensive at all when you first got out on the courts, or how'd that go when the game kind of picked up the action? Um, at first, it was a little, uh, I was a little nervous, but, you know, as the flow went on and, uh, you know, I just got a little more into the game. When you said, you said it was dehydration, was, was um, the incident in the game, connected in any way to uh, the incident practice beforehand? Well, I, if I could in, interject a little bit, he was diagnosed with cardiac arrhythmia, or irregular heartbeat. That's what he was diagnosed with. And he'd been poked and prodded, as I've said before. He's seen a half a dozen uh, heart specialists along the way and, and had so many things that uh, were checked and checked out. But that was the official diagnosis. What's it like for you, Coach, when you know you care about these kids so much and you know the doctors cleared them, but you've seen them collapse and, and put them back out on the court? There's part of you that's probably, most of you is probably really excited. There's got to be part of you that's just kind of a little apprehensive yourself from what might happen. I'm, I'm like a dad. I'm like, I'm like anyone would be in those in circumstances, when Dwayne had his first practice with us, I called Tom Abdenar over. I said, Tom, don't leave my side. You stand and watch every move he makes. I was nervous. I was nervous for him. I've had probably no real need to be, but I was, I was, I was nervous. And uh, when he went in the game on Saturday, I was an excited kind of nervous, but I was, I was, I was, was nervous as most people would be. Uh, but Dwayne has been given a, a, a positive clearance to play with no restrictions. 
Uh, we did travel with the doctor because we felt it was important that we that we do that. And the doctor and Tom uh, took his pulse, took his heart rate. Uh, before the, they went out for first warm up, when they went for the second warm up at halftime, so I think he's under exceptionally good care. Once the nerves subsided and you realize you've got Dwayne Pulley back out on the court, how important was that to this team? Dwayne has been since the moment he came to San Diego State a huge piece to the success that we've had on the court. He can play. Uh, and in typical Dwayne, Dwayne fashion, on his first trip back, he made a three, and he traveled. So he does a little bit of everything for us. Uh, tried to go a little too fast on one play, uh, but uh, trust me, uh, even, the, even the opposition, when they say they're glad he's back, they probably are glad he's healthy, but not so sure they're glad he's back. Um, is that going to be a consistent thing going forward in the, in the rest of the season? I, I don't know that we'll travel with a doctor on, to every game, but I, I would say Tom will be very conscious of monitoring uh, everything that, that goes on with him, for sure. And I, you know, Dr. Alan Richburg did a great job in terms of being the point person medically with the doc from a doctor standpoint. But Tom Abdenar was sensational. Uh, several times he picked uh, DP up before the sun came up and took him home long after the sun went down to, to get him to the appointments that he was at and, and treated him the way you would hope uh, someone would treat your own son or daughter. Uh, so I know that he's had people that care about him much, much more so than how quick can we get him back on the court. A lot of this stuff is beyond your control. You know, other people have to clear you. Um, I'm guessing there was a point, maybe not, but was there a point where you're going, man, this is my senior year. I might not get back out there. You know, did that, did that weigh on you a little bit? Um, no, you know, like you said, I'm a man of faith, so I always believed that, you know, I was going to get back on the court at some point this season, you know, and just staying positive, having Coach Fish staying positive having my immediate circle, Tom, and the rest of the coaching staff, and the rest of the players just staying positive with me. I knew at some point this season I would get back on the court. What was it like when you weren't on the court watching your teammates, knowing you wanted to help, not being able to? Um, just the competitor in me, it was kind of hard just watching it. But you know, I was still cheering, jumping up and down, even though I couldn't be out there. So, I mean, it was still um, a good feeling to see them win and you know see them, you know, picking up stride in such a crucial point in the season. But you know, the competitor in me still wanted to go out there and get on the court. How long have you been practicing, and when did you know that you were cleared and get to possibly play? Um, I found out I would play probably. Uh, I think it was that right after the New Mexico game, coach had talked to me and uh, my doctor had gave me a call, said that, you know, uh, my final test, I came back uh, negative and everything was good to go. But before then, I had been practicing for about uh, two weeks. But me and Tom, we had been doing a lot of conditioning work before I even touched the practice floor. So, you know, I felt like I was in pretty good shape before I even got to practice. Describe the feeling coach calls you in and says T tests are negative, you're going to be playing. Describe that feeling. Uh, I merely jumped out my skin, you know, just to get back out on the court. It was just to hear those words, it was a great feeling. Was there at least some sort of decision on your end, though, considering that maybe I should wait a little bit longer? Was it just, oh, I want to play right away? Did you have to discuss it with your parents, maybe? Oh no, it was no no doubt at all. You know, I knew I knew uh, once I heard got that call that I was ready to get back on the floor. Where are you from a conditioning standpoint uh, as a result of not playing for a while, not practicing? Um, I'm probably about 90%. And, you know, that other 10% is just, you know, being on the court with my teammates again after missing uh, two months not playing. But, you know, Tom and I, we've been uh, working really hard to get me back into shape. So, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I didn't feel too uh, exhausted when I was out there on the court or anything. Coach, um, in terms of the future, 
long-term future, was there any benefit to Dwayne being out because it maybe got other guys some time, allowed other players to develop, allowed you guys to learn how to play without him? Uh, Dwayne would have been on the court, so minutes that he didn't get were got that somebody else got. So uh, that should benefit them and us. Uh, but the flip of that is we now have to, with four games left when he came back, three now, we have to reacquaint him with everybody else and what we're doing. Should be easy, but it's, he hasn't, hasn't been on the court for two months. So I think it's a little bit of a positive and a little bit of a how quickly can we get back into stride and go like we haven't missed a stride. Uh, and we told Dwayne, uh, I told Dwayne before the San Jose State game before, uh, before we went out. I'm going to play you in the first half. I'm not exactly sure when. It will hopefully be sometime around the 8 to 10 minute mark. But we are going to get you in in the first half. I don't know how many minutes you'll play or how, how long your stretch will be. But you are going to play. So just go out and, and relax and, and play and have fun. Uh, so whether that uh, relieved any anxiety, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he was saying, when am I going to get in? When am I going to get in? But he knew that he was going to get in in the first half. Uh, and when he came in, uh, we, were, we were taking on a lot of water. And he gave us a lift. He gave us a lift when he came in. And I, I think that he's going to do that when he comes in on Saturday and hopefully the rest of the season. Dwayne. From a personal level, where do you, what do you want to accomplish with, with what's left of your senior se season? Well, one accomplishment that I want to uh, make is uh, winning another uh, conference uh, championship. And then, uh, you know, from then on out, just keep winning games and win a, a tournament championship to make a, a deep run in March Madness. Sometimes it, it takes something like this to be out for a little while to realize uh, how beloved you are, you know. Can you can you talk about the support walking around campus and, and people are giving you during this time off? Oh yeah, I mean sometimes you know as athletes we might take this type of stuff for granted. You know, uh, the fans we might take for granted. The uh, just the love of the game we might take for granted. So you know, it was a real humbling experience. You know, all the prayers and all the love that I received, not just on campus but from San Diego. Period. You know, it, it really felt good to know that I had all that support behind me. What do you remember about the night class? Um, I remember uh, running back on defense, and then uh, my man was uh, crossing the floor, and then I heard uh, Coach Hutt yelling at me to uh, guard my man, and then I had, uh, went down, and that's all I remember. You haven't watched it yet, have you? Or? No, I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Dwayne, Dwayne, at what point? With all these different doctors and all these different tests, did did somebody sit you down and say, "This is not a life-threatening situation. You're going to be okay." Oh yeah. Um, well, the main doctor that I've been working with, Doctor uh, Doug Gibson, he uh, he broke it down to me and my mom that uh, you know this wasn't a life-threatening event, and if it were to happen again, but he doesn't think it will. But if it does, he said that is 100% not life-threatening. Did you get Did you get second opinions? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've seen six doctors, so, you know, they've all <laughs> kind of, yeah. So I've gotten about and six they all opinions. Say the same thing. Yeah, they all said the same thing. What was going through your head when you, when you, when Coach called you to go out on the court for the first time? Um, just try not to mess up too much, you know, just try and play an easy game, try not to do too much. My first game back, you know, I haven't played in a, two months, so I was just trying to get reacquainted with my teammates and reacquainted with the uh, ball again.